sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Click on the link in the description to get 83% off and one month extra for free. We take a lot of the technology around us today for granted, like many computers for phones that last the entire day, which was unheard of not too long ago. But what if your phone lasted three to four days on a charge? Or a laptop that could be pushed to the limits for an entire day without needing to be plugged in at all? Or an EV that could go five to 600 miles and charge in minutes and cost less than an internal combustion engine car? There's been a lot of hype around solid state batteries for years now, but where do things stand today? And how much longer do we have to wait before we start seeing solid state batteries in the technologies that we use every single day? I'm Matt Farrell, welcome to Decided. The excitement around solid state batteries is understandable. With companies like Toyota teasing a solid state battery vehicle around the time of the Winter Olympics, the buzz continues to grow. The lithium ion batteries that we use today, as great as they are, have some drawbacks that solid state is trying to solve. And to understand those drawbacks, we need to look at the basic components of a battery. There's a positive electrode or cathode, which is usually something like a nickel cobalt aluminum formula. Then there's a perforated separator to keep it isolated from the negative side or anode, which is usually a compound of a carbon material like graphite. Finally, all of this will be filled with a liquid electrolyte that allows the free flow of ions back and forth between the anode and cathode during charging and discharging. You can substitute many chemical formulations for the cathode and the anode, but the liquid or gel electrolytes in most of the batteries that we use today are highly combustible. This can happen because of manufacturing defects or damage to the cell, but it's also a problem because of something called dendrites. Metal can build up in the anode and slowly create stalactite-like growths. And those can extend and puncture the separator between the anode and the cathode, and that's when you get exploding batteries. So how does a solid state battery solve that problem? They replace the liquid electrolyte with, you probably guessed it, a solid one most often a ceramic or glassy electrolyte. Now these solid electrolytes aren't flammable, which means a big improvement with safety. But a bigger benefit of solid electrolytes is the ability to use other anode materials like lithium metal, which has the highest theoretical storage capacity. In fact, lithium metal was used in some of the first lithium ion battery research in 1979. However, one of the reasons we haven't used lithium metal in batteries up until this point is because they suffer from dendrite growth, which is, as I mentioned before, kind of a bad thing. There's been a lot of really interesting research in recent years that may have solutions to that problem though. MIT researchers have developed something called mixed ionic electronic conductors, or MIEC, and electron and lithium ion insulators, or ELI. Now that's, that's a mouthful. It's a three-dimensional honeycomb architecture with nanoscale tubes made from MIEC. And the tubes are infused with lithium metal, which forms the anode. The fascinating part of this breakthrough is that the honeycomb pattern gives the lithium metal room to expand and contract during charging and discharging. Giving the battery room to breathe avoids cracking. And that ELI coating the tubes acts as a barrier protecting them from the solid electrolyte. Now all of this means having a true solid state battery without the need for any liquid or gel mixed in and no dendrite growth. A company called Ion Storage Systems has developed a super thin ceramic electrolyte that's about 10 micrometers thick, which is about the same thickness as today's plastic separators used in liquid electrolytes. Now each side of the ceramic electrolyte is covered in a super thin layer of aluminum oxide that helps to reduce resistance. The company's prototype battery had a specific energy of 300 watt hours per kilogram and is capable of charging in five to 10 minutes. For a point of comparison, today's commercial lithium ion batteries can do about 250 watt hours per kilogram. IBM and Daimler announced a breakthrough solid state battery that used IBM's quantum computing on a battery chemistry that uses no heavy metals, such as nickel or cobalt, and that aren't extracted in damaging ways. But unlike other big breakthrough announcements, they provide no details that can be explained or corroborated. All we know is what they've told us, and it's very vague. Like that it can supposedly charge to 80% in five minutes and match the energy density of state-of-the-art lithium batteries. This announcement has been met with a lot of skepticism due to the lack of details. But one announcement, which is the biggest of them all, is back to the legendary rock star of the battery technologies himself and Nobel Prize winner, John B. Goodenough. Together with his co-author, Maria Helena Braga, they announced a glass battery. At 97 years old, John Goodenough is still researching battery chemistries to replace lithium ion batteries 
with something better, faster, safer, and ecologically sound. Something that would be cheaper than gas and would push humanity off the need to use fossil fuels. Both Maria Braga and John Goodenough think they've unlocked that potential with their discovery. The glass battery doesn't use cobalt, and lithium could eventually be replaced with easily accessible sodium. That means these batteries could be biodegradable at some point. And as you probably guessed from the nickname, it's using a glass electrolyte. They can last for more than 23,000 charge and discharge cycles, which is more than a minor improvement over several thousand for a typical lithium ion cell. Now there's still some debate from battery researchers around Goodenough and Braga's findings, but Goodenough's credentials as one of the inventors of the lithium ion battery add a lot of credibility to the findings. But before I get to what that means for the future of solid state batteries and when we might see them, I'd like to thank Surfshark for sponsoring this video. I spent my fair share of time using free Wi-Fi in airports, coffee shops, and hotels, and whenever I do, I always use a VPN to protect my data. Free Wi-Fi may be free, but it's not secure. Surfshark encrypts all of the data that you send over the internet so your private data like passwords, messages, photos, videos, and whatever you're doing online stays private. You can change your country location, which can unlock content, and Surfshark also provides more protection with CleanWeb which blocks ads, trackers, and malicious websites. One of the best parts of Surfshark is that it's easy to set up on all of your devices, whether that's iPhone or Android, Mac, or PC. Surfshark is the only VPN to offer one account to use with an unlimited number of devices. Use my code to get 83% off plus one extra month for free. And Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out for yourself. Link in the description below, and thanks to Surfshark and to all of you for supporting the channel. Now this all leads me to the giant question of when. When will we finally see the solid state batteries hit the market? We've heard of promises of solid state battery breakthroughs for years, but have yet to see them in the wild. And that's part of why I selected some of the examples that I did, like the IBM example. When it comes to news reports and public perception, there's a disconnect between research and breakthroughs in the lab versus when it becomes commercialized in the marketplace. There's often the perception that it'll be a product within a year or two, which is actually something IBM stated in their announcement. They partnered with Mercedes-Benz R&D North America, a Japanese chemical company called Central Glass, and a battery startup called Citus to test the battery. A direct quote from an interview with IEEE Spectrum said, IBM has built prototype pouch battery cells in the lab, which give her group confidence that they could develop a commercial product for limited applications, example, portable power tools, within one to two years. One to two years, <laughs> that's exciting. Unless you pay attention to the specifics of limited applications like portable power tools. This isn't something that's gonna be in EVs anytime soon. Sadly, some companies perpetuate this misperception on purpose to appear as though they're relevant and competitive in the marketplace. At CES this year, Mercedes showed off their Avatar concept car, which is made of environmentally friendly materials and a cutting edge battery pack that's fully recyclable. That got a lot of headlines. But in an interview with Mercedes senior manager of battery research, he stated that the battery technology is currently in lab testing and about 10 to 15 years away. I just recently had a video about CATL and their prismatic cell to pack technology that Tesla may be using soon. Well, CATL also produced a solid state battery sample, but said it wouldn't be commercialized until after 2030. Now, I don't bring all of this up to squash the excitement around the research and breakthroughs with solid state batteries. It's important to keep things in context and understand that it's incredibly difficult to go from lab to manufacturing at scale cost-effectively. Remember that it was over a decade between the original lithium-ion battery research and Sony producing the first commercially available version. And even John Goodenough thinks it's going to be five to 10 years before solid-state batteries will become commercially successful. Even Toyota's planned solid-state vehicle announcement around the time of the Olympics is another good indicator. Toyota's R&D chief has said, we will produce a car with solid state batteries and unveil it to you in 2020, but mass production with solid state batteries will be a little later. And by a little later, he means mid 2020s at the earliest. We're in a giant middle step of solid state research, which is trying to apply what has been learned in the lab to real world production in limited situations. John Goodenough is doing that with Hydro Quebec. The University of Texas at Austin owns the patents to the glass battery but is working with Hydro-Quebec to try to commercialize the technology. We believe there will be a significant development work and testing required before Hydro-Quebec will know whether a product can be manufactured and how such a product might perform compared to existing lithium-ion battery cells. 
we're most likely going to see solid state battery technology hit the market in small batches in very limited ways. The difficulty in manufacturing yields and costs will mean it's most likely going to be used in small form factors like consumer electronics. Think smartphones and smartwatches. As the process and chemistries get perfected, we'll start to see it in larger scale products and ultimately EVs. I wouldn't be surprised if John Goodenough's prediction is accurate and that we'll see the first batteries in five years or so, but we're most likely a decade away before it starts to make significant inroads. But once it does, it's gonna change everything, again. Everything we know and expect out of consumer electronics, health technology, and EVs will shift. We'll be able to charge phones and cars in minutes instead of hours. I'm really excited to see where solid state batteries can take us in the future. But for the time being, <laughs> We'll just need to be a little bit patient. Now jump into the comments and let me know if you're excited for solid state batteries and what technologies you're most excited to see it in. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends because it really helps support the channel. And be sure to check out my new podcast that I started with my brother. We discussed the previous week's video and some of your feedback. And you can find out more at stilltbd.fm or just search for Still To Be Determined on your podcast host of choice. Give it a listen and let me know what you think. And if you think I've earned it, I hope you'll consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to get alerts when I post a new video. Without that bell, you might miss out. And as always, an extra big thank you to all my patrons. I've got a lot of exciting videos in the works and your support is really making this possible. Be sure to check out my Patreon page for additional details about joining the crew. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.